Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today we continue with the Golden Era series on the myth Sergio Oliva, undoubtedly one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. No doubt he was blessed with phenomenal genetics. However, the focus of this new series is to explore the blueprint of the myth, which in combination with his genetics led to his incredible strength and massive physique for 1970s standards. Today, we look at the early years, at Sergio's harsh and tough upbringing, and how during his teenage years in Cuba, he forged a foundation and uh, for strength through countless hours of hard, hard labor. Now, when we look at Sergio's roots, we find out that he uh, was born and raised in Wanabakoa, Havana. Now, this part of Havana is not the Havana that you see in the sunny holiday snapshots. Not at all. He was uh, raised in the slums of Wanabakoa. He mentions that his parents, his whole, f his family, they were very poor, and um, his parents struggled to feed um, their their twenty children, including Sergio. And um, although uh, he was born under poor conditions, he does mention that but that both his parents were incredibly strong, and no doubt that's where his incredible genetics came from. Now, because of this poverty that he and his family suffered, he mentions that very early on at 12 years of age he was already working in the cane fields to support his family under the communist revolution led by fidel castro uh, he explains that families children were all forced to work even uh, not uh, not only during uh, weekdays where normally you would work eight to ten hours a day but even on saturdays and sundays you were forced to work in the cane fields and he mentions that he worked with his father in the sugarcane fields. And can you imagine working long, long hours um, every single day as a child? Can you imagine the foundation of strength? I mean, yes, it is hard and there's great hardship and, and, and toughness that is forged from this, but also a lot, a lot of strength. So I can imagine that this began his foundation of strength. Now, Sergio's hardships of and suffering didn't end there. Um, he mentions that a year later, at 13 years of age, he began collecting rubbish to support his family. How did he support his family collecting rubbish? Well, firstly, he built his own wheelbarrow. And in order to help his family, he started to collect bones, beef and chicken bones, and um, go from place to place collecting them to resell them later on. And, and um, when he couldn't collect beef and chicken bones, he, he would collect newspapers and sell these to the butchers so that the butchers can, um, could use them to wrap up their meat and, and sell uh, their meats and, and cuts to their customers. And when he couldn't find bones or newspapers, he would collect glass bottles. And so he would be basically pushing wheelbarrows day after day for miles every single day, hour upon hour. And he does recall being thin, being very thin because he didn't eat much but he was incredibly strong already at a very early age in his career. Now here is a direct quote from Sergio Oliva from his book, The Myth, His Life Story, which I believe really explains his foundation to strength. At 13, it was very hard for me to work all the time when other kids my age were playing and having fun, but I did it. I had to work. My family was very low income. And that's the way it was. This made the foundation for my later years to be able to develop my body. There you go, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, Sergio explaining how all these hours of hardship and hard labor at such a young age really helped to lay the foundation for his incredible strength, which was going to be extremely useful for developing his massive physique later on. Now there is a term known as farm boy strength or even old man strength that gets thrown around these days mainly because there has uh, been a slow dec uh, decline in strength over the years due to the increase in technology and basically um, it's interesting when you see that as technology has improved uh, the human race has basically become weaker and weaker. 
Um, it's interesting to see that in the 1970s, an article was written by John Jesse, a, a coach, and he relates that athletes, this is in the 70s, 50 years ago, athletes were no longer drawn from, from a uh, back of hard labor. So even back then in the 70s, uh, coaches were realizing that young athletes were not as strong as the athletes from yesteryear, mainly because of the increase in technology. Um, uh, kids were not having to do hard labor anymore. And so this rugged foundation, this farm boy strength um, was, was no longer there. And uh, athletes were having to be trained more with barbells and dumbbells to basically make them stronger. Um, as, as many people relate to this farm boy strength on old man strength, um, basically uh, hard labor gives this strength that is basically non-existent nowadays. Um, when you look at, for example, Iceland strongman like Tor here, right, or uh, otherwise known as the mountain, um, Iceland, for example, having a very small population of 300,000 people is not a very well uh, developed country in, in regards to infrastructure. And so only until recently, and therefore farming, for example, used to be the national job. And this is one of the reasons why many people attribute Iceland's um, str uh, the population's uh, strength because um, basically these people have been born to live under hardship and therefore they are all very very strong so how is it that one develops this rugged strength this rugged old man strength or, or rugged farm boy strength and power so what is farm boy strength for as the name suggests it is a kind of strength that is acquired by working in a farm now, if you see what farmers do, I know what they do because I live amongst farms. My neighbor is a farmer. And what do they do? I mean, they're, they're out there on the fields working hours upon hours and year after year, different seasons. It doesn't matter if it's winter, if it's snowing or blazing hot in summer. These guys just work their asses off all the time. It's not like us gym bros that go to the gym for an hour or two, drink our protein shake and we're done with our workout. No, that's not it. These guys work all day long, year after year. The work varies and the work that they do is of moderate intensity and it is performed frequently all the time. This builds incredible work capacity. It builds, more importantly, builds tendon and ligament strength. These guys aren't super buff like, uh, you know, they don't have this pump to look like a bodybuilder, but they are strong as hell and they are very strong because their tendons and ligaments have been built over a long period of time doing hour upon hour of hard, hard work. So just like Sergio, how is it that we get farm boys strong? Well, we have to use firstly dynamic and irregular shaped objects. We're talking barrels, we're talking sandbags, we're talking all these odd shaped pieces of equipment that aren't as comfortable to grab and hold like a dumbbell or a barbell or worse still a machine. These these um, apparatuses involve incredible stability of your core, leg strength and it builds grip strength like hell. So we're talking about different kinds of training methods such as DVRT, dynamic variable resistance training, basically the use of a sandbag. Believe me, try and grab a sandbag um, that, that is uh, progressively heavier and and the the fact that the sand moves from side to side up and down your balance is lost and it is really it's hell on your grip it, it builds incredible strength um, similarly large medicine balls that weigh a lot as well would, would tax your strength and your stability your core your grip water filled barrels or balls my god have you ever tried to to lift a barrel that is not completely full as the water moves and sways from side to side it will just topple you over you would lose your grip and you drop the barrel these kinds of apparatuses that are so dynamic that they move like that um, which replicate the kind of work that you do in a farm for example or during hard labor are really difficult and they really build this rugged strength such as Sergio built um, another one, of course, is kettlebells. All of these methods, you may realize, are starting to come back in CrossFit and strongman st uh, style training, even lifting logs, lifting boulders, all these things. That's how you get farm boy strong. So that really ends the first part, part one of the blueprint to the myth. Um, 
you know and you understand now that it is his hard labor during his childhood working on farms, on cane fields, working with a wheelbarrow, carrying it up and down hills full of glass bottles or, or bones or whatever that he used to pick up all this garbage just to f help his family out. It is this um, early hardship that really built that foundation for strength. After this, of course, um, uh, during um, later years, when he was about 15, 16 years old, he joined the Cuban army. And he also relates in his book that he had to walk for miles upon miles through the rugged mountains of, of, um, of his country with little food and water, little rest. And um, this, of course, would have contributed to his conditioning and strength. But it is later on that we really start seeing the, the blueprint of Oliva evolving when he began weightlifting. And that is the next part of this series. And I can't wait to go through it with you. So in the next video, part two of the Blueprint to the Myth, I will delve into Sergio Oliva's weightlifting, his short-lived weightlifting career in Cuba and how he then moved to the USA. And although he continued weightlifting there, later on, of course, he began bodybuilding and the rest is history. What's incredible, what's incredible about um, his weightlifting uh, stories is that he does relate one incredible story which I will end with and that is through this foundation of um, developing strength through uh, working in the cane fields through hard labor it, it is told that Sergio is at the beach and this man invites him to um, to join his gym to join his weightlifting gym because he told him you have all the attributes to becoming a great weightlifter Sergio walks into the gym and he lifts 200 pounds. He presses it over his head like nothing. I hope you can understand what I mean by the foundation of strength that he developed through hard labor. Sergio said it himself that early on, all this hard labor was to lay the foundation of strength. And if, if you can see a man just walk out from the street and lift 200 pounds, press it over his head. You know he is goddamn strong without ever training in his life. That's incredible. It's incredible what 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 foundation Sergio already had even before he started weightlifting. And this will be covered um, along with his short-lived weightlifting career in um, in the next video. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the blueprint to the myth. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And um, again, thank you for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now.